If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, uh, in the beginning, in our intro, which lasts about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, yeah. we talk about Adam's wedding. Pretty much just to plug myself in my first <laughs> well, place at exactly. Sacramento Show. He did. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. talk about- Dick. His we t- cousin's wedding. We talk Calm about down. my kid and how he locked his phone and would not open it for me or his mom. Yeah. Uh, he's 12. Hmm. <laughs> we talked about parent parenting. We talked about burn barrels. The hell is that? Yeah. Find out in this episode. We also <laughs> mentioned Organifi. In this episode, we are sponsored by Organifi, great organic supplements. If you go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code MindPump, you'll get 20% off. And then we also mention our other sponsor, Thrive Market. Now, this is a place where you can buy all organic, non-GMO products at massive discounts. But what's even better is if you use our code, you'll get a free month subscription, you'll get $20 off your orders, and you'll get free shipping. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump. And then we get into the questions. The first question was, what are some of the most appropriate exercises for people in advanced stage or, or novices who want to build strength and mobility? How do we start them off? The second question was, uh, Mark Sisson, who's actually a leader in the wellness industry, he believes that everybody should always get away with eating the least amount of calories. So what is our opinion on that? Do we hmm. think he's right or do we think he's wrong? Find out. We then shall the see. next question was, what are opinions on stevia? That's the, uh, the zero calorie sweetener that's not artificial. What do we think about that, especially in comparison to the artificial sweeteners like sucralose or aspartame? Mm-hmm. Finally, what are the best anabolic foods? Get you jacked. Remember, anabolic means build. What foods help you build the most? That's why we named MAPS, MAPS Anabolic, because it's the muscle builder of all programs. Uh, Also, speaking of MAPS, there's only four days left for our September promotion. If you enroll in pretty much any program or any bundle, you'll get something for free. So either you're going to get MAPS Prime for free, or you'll get MAPS Prime Pro for free, or... You'll get uh, what do you or maps performance for free. Mm-hmm. So it depends on what you enroll in. Even if you enroll in our super just bundle, buy something, you get something. You're for gonna free. get some shit for free. Awesome promotion. Just go to mindpumpmedia.com and enroll. T-shirt time. Give away some shirts, Doug. How many re- how many reviews we got? We got this time? twenty reviews. Hey. Oh, it's bumping up. Hey, I like. We're that. doing all right now. So yeah. we're gonna send out six shirts. Say that fast three times. Yeah, fast. say that one six quickly. Six <laughs> All right, so the six winners are Nope, two, 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 two. <laughs> A lot of twos. I like that. Bepler, four. Tim Eshelman, Body Under Construction, 33. Hmm. JRVSCRR, 911. And Y2 Kumensen. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. So Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Thanks, all y'all. This is pretty funny, dude. What's funny? Well, I'm reading all the comments of people talking shit and people, oh, they're a great company, this and that. So Rogue, okay, this is totally piqued my interest right now. Rogue has created a burn barrel. So for explain a burn barrel. I don't know. I, I you showed me the picture. All it is is just a barrel so you can burn fucking wood outside. So you can have a bonfire. <laughs> So it's a safer way to have bonfires. And so Rogue's like, hey, we're going to get into like the, a culture thing with CrossFit or something. We're going to get into the business. Well, of- this is what that's what I'm wondering. I wonder if this has become a popular thing in CrossFit. Yeah, this is where I'm I'm too disconnected from CrossFit. To the newest know. way to burn fat. <laughs> yeah, burn it in a barrel. Burn in a burning <laughs> barrel. Burn it in a barrel. <laughs> Light yourself on fire. Or no. Maybe that's for like obstacle course races. They jump over it or something. No, it's, it's just a, it's, it's just not a burn like barrel. that at all. It's literally a burn barrel. <laughs> I'm on the I'm on the website. I'm looking at the the. Oh, Oh, it's on the website. I was looking at the Instagram. I don't see it. Yeah, it's like it's three hundred dollars, two hundred ninety-five dollars. It's is that a good price for a burn barrel? Do you guys know what they? <laughs> I have no cost? idea, dude. I don't even know. I didn't even know they existed. Uh, you know, I I haven't been burn barrel shopping lately, so I don't know what the <laughs> what the market norm is. I do know that this is really weird to me. Yeah, that we it would, doesn't make any sense, or does it? Well. Is there something that Rogue knows? <laughs> I felt like the X Files song should have started right there. <laughs> 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 yeah. See, when Doug has more time, I want him to do things like that. Because right there, I think to produce that in right now would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. So I'm on. I'm on Amazon right now. 
You can buy burn barrels for expensive ones, $448. Some are as cheap as $40, but it just looks like a garbage can with holes in it. $200 for this one. So I think they're right in the middle Okay. for prices. Uh, for I mean, does barrels. it have its own? Uh, where do you find it? You I went on Amazon. Section on here? No, no. On, where on did I find it? It's yeah. so, no, somebody's. On, it's on our fo- in our it feed. Got highlighted? No, no, no it's oh. on our feed. Go to your go to your mind pump feed. Is it a real? Go to Facebook. Maybe uh, it's not real. No, 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 bro. It's on their website. I'm on their website. Oh, okay. So I'm on, I'm on their website. That's how I knew it was two ninety. It's two ninety five. They're and- called burn cages. <laughs> Incinerate leaves. What does it say here? It's. Inci- and sensitive documents. <laughs> Does it really say that? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Does it really say that? Yeah. Oh no, this is uh, this is not Rogue. This is a different no, one. This is, this is okay. Rogue Supply 11 gauge steel burn barrel gives you the ability to set up a fully functional backyard fire pit without the cost and complexity of landscaping project. This simple design, inspired by the popular use of the old tractor tires as fire pit liners, oh. measures 30 inches in diameter with a laser cut ventilation slots throughout the 16 inch high paneling. At a weight of less than 50 pounds, each burn barrel is uniquely portable, so you can take. We just gave them a commercial. Yeah, we should yeah. we should call them up and get yeah. some commission. Rogue, you owe some money. Yeah. I, I don't know though. I don't know if it's a great like. Ugh. That is so weird. Weird. Yeah. 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 Is there now maybe right now is there something going on that's becoming popular of like maybe going to beaches and doing yeah, CrossFit right? on the beach and there's like a competition like that some party surrounding that I don't know yeah is that be- like I know that after after uh, wads it's it's kind of like a thing to drink beer afterwards you blow your wad you drink some beer so I think that's a thing is or there, it's the other way around yeah, is there maybe. is there a, is there a thing now to to do a bonfire and drink beer afterwards or something, and maybe they're promoting that? I don't know, but it sounds cool. Yeah, it I mean, sound awesome. Because I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I kind of want to do that. I want to work out and, yeah. then, and then make a fire and then yeah. drink. Let's do that. That <laughs> sounds to me like a great idea. It does. You know what I mean? Thank you, Rogue. Yeah. You now know, that's what I'm going to do. Barrel ordered. Mm-hmm. What, what I appreciate and what I like about it is this, is that I don't have the I don't have a fucking clue but what it could be an example of, which is something Mind Pump would totally do, <laughs> is just recognize a need somewhere in business and say, hey, yeah. we have an audience. I'm sure they, there's enough people. <laughs> the, I'm sure the million the people. The Mind Pump bong. I'm sure yeah. there's a pill. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so at, much money. Right. Yeah. At, at the million million listens in a month, I'm sure at least 1,000 yeah. of them like to sit by bonfires. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, oh, I yeah. think. Maybe there's a little bit more logic behind this than, mm. than we're giving it. Like, Mind and, pump vape pens. And yeah. I mean, they do present <laughs> the idea that it's common, I guess, to flip tractor tires and burn inside tractor tires. That does not sound like a good idea. It doesn't sound... Yeah. I, don't they catch doesn't fire? healthy. Don't tires... Aren't tires highly flammable? Yeah. I didn't know that people... I think eat, if they heat up enough, yeah. I'm sure they Maybe tractor fire. tires are different? Super I don't Because it's... A, it, that's what toxic. it's... Toxic. That's what it is. It's instead of... You know, the popular mm. use of old tractor tires as fire pit liners. Mm. I didn't know uh, that. I didn't know that. So, dude, I got a hilarious story for you guys. Tell okay. me. Okay. So, I get a call. Uh, you can't start it like that because then it'll never live up to it. So what do you mean? Like, <laughs> just say I have a story. <laughs> we'll a help story. you. We'll, we'll yeah. make it funny. Now everyone's like on edge. I have like a really, like, this better be I have funny. a really boring story. Okay. Uh, there, there, there you go. Right. Set it low. Set, set it, it low. I set the bar low. Right. So, uh, I get a call yesterday from my ex, and she calls me up and she goes, your son locked his phone and he won't open it for me. He won't. He won't unlock it. <laughs> so, I, so my son's twelve, right? So I'm like, oh fuck. I'm like, what happened? She's like, well, he was on it, and I walk over to see what he's doing, and he locks it. And then I tell him to give me the passcode, and he won't give me the passcode, hmm. and he refuses to open his phone. So I'm like, what's he doing, right? He's in seventh grade now. I remember me when I was in seventh grade. So I'm like, hmm, what's, I'm sure I think I know what's in there. So I get on the phone with him. I'm like, let me talk to him. So I'm like, listen, son, I said, uh, I know you're probably embarrassed or whatever about whatever's on your phone. I said, the fact that you're making this big of a deal about it and not opening it now is making us more worried. Yeah, and it I'm, makes it worse. Yeah, it makes it a lot worse. So just open your phone and it'll be cool. And he's like, no, I don't want to. I'm not going to. I don't care. I'm like, you do realize you'll never have an electronic for the rest of your life until you do this. Like, an electronical toy? And, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Adam. <laughs> Can't get it electronical. And, uh, uh, no more electronicals for you, son. Uh, yeah. That's what I would say. But he's like refusing. <laughs> so, so I'm talking to him. Understand, I understand, We're cutting all the electronicals yeah. off right now. Yeah. He's like, fine. It's not even a word. He's like, you can cut all the electronicals off. I don't own any of those. <laughs> 
So I'm like, listen, I'm like, yeah, if you don't unlock it, I said, I have friends who can unlock it for me and I'll find out what's on. And then, and then you're going to be in big trouble. Mm. So we're going back and forth. Now, I went to, uh, my son goes to a different school than I did. He's, it's much more like nice kids, a little bit more sheltered. I went to a gangster ass school. I was exposed to a lot of different <laughs> things. And I've experienced this with my kids in the past where they're really freaked out about something. Yeah, and then I end up finding out what it is. And no it's, big deal. it's like nothing. Yeah. Dude, when yeah. he was in third grade, he came home from school and he was all distraught because somebody said a bad word. He would not tell us what it was. Mm. Finally, I pulled it out of him that it started with the letter S. So I'm like, ass. I'm like, shit. Did they say shit? Like, what was it? So finally I asked him, like, and I got him to tell me what it was. Someone said stupid. Okay. So this is, so remember the context. Whoa. So he's freaked out, doesn't want us to see it. Finally, I convinced him to unlock his phone. He's been messaging his friends back and forth and they cuss. They cuss on the fucking text. And he's all worried because he says, <laughs> he's on he says the F word. Yeah. yeah. He says the F word. On the freaking Mom's text. going to be real disappointed. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, you're not going to be in trouble. Now, how did yeah. this work? Now, okay, because I'm thinking in my head, like, why didn't he just unlock it, clear it real quick, and then give it to his mom? But is she did she confiscate it? Oh, say, no, like, no, no. She went full woman style. Like, uh, if you know, if a woman thinks you got some shit on your phone, <laughs> give me that. She, that phone not leaving yeah. her sight. Yeah, give you me know? that. She's not stupid, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. She had the phone in her hand, and she's like, we're going to open it right in front of me. Because I'm sure he thought, you know. Yeah. So he's just dropping a bunch of F-bombs. I'm like, so I told him, I said, listen, dude, I said, I know when I was your age, I used to cuss all the time too. I thought it was super cool. It's not as cool as you think. Just don't listen to my podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it made me a career, but yeah. you know. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I said, listen, you, you talk like that with your friends. That's fine. Just don't talk like that in front of adults, in front of your sister or whatever. And you know, don't disrespect your parents. Right. If there was a place to do it, it would be via text with yeah. your friend on the totally. But we were all worried, you know, we're going to oh, open man. up some crazy shit. Yeah. So. I thought he would just have some naked pictures. No, or something. dude. Oh, That's what I God. thought, like sharing pictures with his buddy. Like, no. check out this naked chick. Here's a boob. I found it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. it, it was basically like... You know, like, I hate this fucking game or this fucking guy cheated or stupid yeah. shit like that. <laughs> it wasn't even bad cussing. Matt's being a <laughs> shit. Like, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a real shit head. You know? So I feel like, do I make a big deal about it so he doesn't push it even further? You know, yeah. I can't believe you said a bad word, yeah. son. <laughs> Ten lashes. <laughs> Ten lashes. <laughs> but no, was, that was all yeah. it was. That, you know, that he's has to, way behind me when I was his age. How does that take how, away your fruit? How yeah. fast is that process for you when you when that happens, when, they, when, when you're dealing with that, right? You get on the phone. And in your head, I know it's a million things are going through your head. Like, okay, could it be this? Could be that? Could be this? Could be this? And then when you find out what it is, is there a moment where you go like, okay, should I act mad about this or should I just let it blow over? Like, you know, I you, I yeah. want. Here's the big thing that you have to, that I've realized when I was a kid is that because I had pretty strict parents, uh, we didn't talk a lot about, and there were certain topics we didn't talk about. Like, we didn't talk about sex mm. ever. My sex education was literally yeah. the dirty jokes that my dad's workers would tell me when I would go to work with my dad and he wasn't around. <laughs> that was the shit. That's how I learned about shit is they'd tell me these dirty jokes yeah. and the dirty magazine that I found. Uh, but nobody talked about sex. We didn't talk about drugs. We didn't talk about any of this stuff, masturbation, none of this stuff. So it was very taboo, very strict. And so it doesn't mean you're not going to do it. You're just going to hide. You're not going to talk to your parents about it. And then you're going to have all these like fears around and all this weird stuff, right? I'd rather have my kids tell me the horrible shit that happens and be honest with me yeah. and then handle it, you know, take it from there. And is he going to get in trouble for cussing? N no. If he's stupid and he cusses in front of his teachers, well, yeah, you're in trouble now, you idiot. You don't yeah. you cuss in front. But you're doing your buddies, you know. You yeah. know when you I go back and forth because <laughs> this reminds me of um, this one time. So, like, uh, you know, my, my, my two boys were just kind of like rapping back and forth off of like they're just like playing around with words and stuff. And like there's a duck, you know, and so they're like throwing different words, ah, truck, and this, and I'm like, oh no, it's gonna, you know, <laughs> here it comes because the first one that comes to your head is fuck. Yeah, right? the youngest, he's just like, yeah, but, ah, fuck, you know this, and then they kept going, and then like Ethan kind of froze, like because I think he knew it was a bad word, and I looked at, you know, and I was just like, oh, I just like, I, like I pretend I didn't hear it, you know, and I was like waiting for them to keep going through the words, and then like said it again, and I had to be like, okay, so there's there's like words. Words that we don't use. <laughs> That's one of them, you know. And I'm like, Dude, until you get your own podcast. That exact, yeah. that exact yeah. thing so happened. How to you me. say that yeah. as parents? Like, yeah. you guys can't use that until you have your own yeah. podcast, and like, then you can do whatever you want. No, there, my, there's an age, you know. Yeah. That exact thing happened this. with my daughter, uh, like a few days ago too. She was rhyming words, and she said "dick," 
Oh my god. Yeah, and so, but I didn't say anything. But my son gave it away. Which dick? She's eight. Dick, dick coming out of your daughter's mouth is worse than fuck coming out of your yeah, son's it's, mouth. It's right? just like, sound, that sounded you terrible. Can, that like right, your son says together. fuck. You're like, yeah. son, hey, keep that in text. Don't say that around your mom. Wow. Your daughter says dick. It's like, yeah. come here. Yeah, yeah. you got to talk right yeah. now. No, no. <laughs> she was rhyming words, and she's she's oh eight. God. Get, get that said, out of your mouth. She come said on, she said dick, and my son gave it away. He starts crack. He starts cracking up, and he's like, you said dick, and he's laughing, and I'm looking at my son like dude don't give yeah, it away don't, don't and so she's it. like why what does that mean oh my god she's like what's wrong with that oh word? she didn't even know what it meant no so yeah. no she was just rhyming dude the innocence is is you gotta keep it in perspective yeah. you know like, but i had to tell her because yeah. he made a big deal about it so i'm wow. like it means penis Ugh. she's like dick means penis. i was like yes don't say it and anymore. now forever she'll like oh yeah like oh. throw that random oh no no no, no now oh. the other day she's <laughs> the other day she said <laughs> She said, I don't remember what she said. She's like, and he got kicked in the dick. And I said, yeah. yeah. And I said, listen, I said, just keep using penis if you're going to talk about that area. Like getting kicked in the dick. Dick. That's very dick. You got an eight-year-old girl. Oh my I'm going to kick you in the dick. <laughs> kick you in the dick. Think about how intimidated you would be if some girl said that to you in the playground. <laughs> like, oh keep no, it keep it up, Justin. I'm gonna kick you in your <laughs> dick. Whoa, <laughs> stay away from this. I just girl. learned about my dick <laughs> last month. <laughs> You're already gonna kick it. Fuck. I heard that hurts. Yeah. She's crazy. Yeah, yeah no, um, no, it's it's funny to deal with kids, man. The shit that they do. I went and watched. Uh, so we were out. Um, Katrina and I took off to Sacramento. <clears throat> my sack town. That's right. Speaking my, of dick, sack. My cousin, <laughs> my cousin got married out there. It's hot. It's sweaty. It's beautiful sack. place called the Firehouse in Old Town Sack. What a beautiful restaurant and venue to get married at. It was absolutely gorgeous. And uh, we went and stayed. So we went up the day before because they were doing like a rehearsal kind of dinner barbecue at the family. It was totally low-key, where all the family, friends, everybody could come to the house for. So we decided instead of driving up <clears throat> the the day before, staying there, that we would stay at one of our favorite hotels over there. And there's uh, right not too far from Old old Town, Old Town Sack, or whatever they call it, uh, is uh, the West End. Old and Wrinkly it's, Sack. <laughs> right, it's right. Yeah, old Wrinkly Sack. I don't know if that's what they call it, bro. The Old Sack. Uh, uh, they, just trying to help. They've got uh, the Weston has a beautiful hotel right there on the river that we stayed at when um, I competed at the at the um, Sacramento show, my show that I took first. So there's of course uh, good feelings. <laughs> well, long long way for you to tell everybody you took first. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing around. Well, we said I didn't. That's the end of the story. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? Isn't that great, guys? Isn't that great? Yeah. Well, there was uh, there was some times we didn't take uh, any place at all, and that I stayed in sack. Yeah. So there was a show there that I didn't place at all. Who got married? Uh, my cousin. I said my co- my cousin Johnny. How old is he? He is twenty five, oh, and he fuck, is he's the, young. Well, he's the only other male Schaefer right now, so he's there's he's carrying the name on. Oh. So he's uh, oh, so he, he needs to hurry up and make seed. some boys. right, right, just in case I don't. So and you know there was that in the back of my head, like listen, there's only a couple of us male Schaefers left on this side of the family, mm. and so I, I I almost felt obligated to have a child for that exact reason, but. Now I feel comfortable because he's 25. He's already getting married to a young, beautiful 23-year-old, uh, Juliet. So uh, the chances of them having kids are probably much greater than me having anytime soon. So the Schaefer name will live on. Uh, were the, you in the wedding or were you just attending? No, no, no. I was just attending. He uh, he had most of his his buddies. And we weren't so... I This is my uncle who... <clears throat> this is my father who uh, died when I was seven. It's his brother that I really didn't get as connected to him until almost 30. So we've become really tight in the last, you know, eight years or so. You, But before that, I really didn't see him that much. So Johnny, my cousin, who's 25, I really wasn't in his life that much until most recently. So most recently I've been uh, seeing them and spending a lot of time with them. But before that, oh, we weren't that that close. Do at they all. live up there? Yeah, they live in there. Sacramento. Yeah. Is he, has he got like a job and he's done with school doing his thing now or... Yeah, he works. He's really into uh, you know brewing and wine. Like he's a major wine and alcohol guy. So like he's all into. He's working for some brewing company, I think, right now. Uh, that's kind of like where his passion is. So he's like my other brother in law, who's they're hardcore into IPAs, mm-hmm. and they, they you can sit there, they'll sit there and talk to each other. Like the everything had like wine or beer type decorations for all the stuff on the tables and everything. It was pretty cool. It was done really, really well. And that I've never been to the firehouse. So if you're ever in old sack, 
that's a really cool restaurant to check out. Just absolutely beautiful. And the food was amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was a good time. We had a good, a good time. Do out you guys there. like weddings? I, you know, like it depends if it's a, one of your, your buddies, like your real good friends or something. I don't, I hate going to like, you know, my wife's friends weddings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anybody. And Have you been to a lot? Lame. I've been to a lot of those. Oh, I've been to so uh, many. Sometimes yeah. I like it. Like, you know, it's nice to kind of, you know, it's always a good energy there. Yeah. Right. It's exactly. I think for those reasons, I'm with Justin that it's it's positive. Like, I know my girl likes them. So yeah. for those reasons, this is my this is my side of the family. So, <clears throat> and it wasn't, I like ones that are like this. It was very fun and like, it wasn't, it, even though it was formal, it didn't feel that way. Some weddings, like, uh, like I don't know if you've ever been to a Catholic wedding or not. I've been to a couple Catholic weddings in my Come life. On, bro. <laughs> well, not everybody has, even if you are technically Catholic. Some people haven't been to a Catholic wedding. Yeah. But yeah. if you've ever been to one, they're, they're ton. you know, three hours long and you're standing and sitting and standing and sitting. And it's like oh, super formal and super rough to go to. So it wasn't like that, you know. Mm-hmm. So what do they call it when it's after the ceremony, like reception? After, yeah, that's the only part that I. You don't show up for the mass. No, I don't go. I don't go to that part. I God, just, I, I'm I not make a, up an excuse and I show up later. I don't like weddings because I don't like dressing up. Uh, that's not fun. Then mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not a big like. I could care less about dancing, let alone dancing with a bunch of relatives. And you just basically drink. There's really nothing much to, you know. And the food really at weddings isn't that great Dude, usually. Those are, all, well, those the, are all great things. I think these are the things. About. Some wedding, I've been to a lot, right? And I've seen little things that I like. Like uh, Larry, actually one of the coolest parts mm-hmm. at Larry's wedding, his first wedding, uh, and I, I thought it was awesome. And I haven't seen anybody top it yet. They did such a cool video of uh, talking to all the best friends and the parents and the families of both sides. And they made this super awesome like hype video. Uh, so if you were somebody, and this is what I, what I, I think what is a lame for weddings is that a lot of times you're at a wedding and it's, it's you're paying your respect for that person, but really you like don't know that relationship that well. Like, mm-hmm. let's be honest. Like I know my cousin well, and even that, I don't, I didn't get to sit in that much time, but, and I know Juliet because I've been around her a couple of times, but I really don't know them as a couple. Right. Yeah. So the with Larry's, it was so cool to watch, uh, this video before the whole wedding happened it w- or it was right after the ceremony. And it, I thought it was, I think everybody should do something like this for the, well, for the guests because it gives you like this storyline and you get to really kind of understand, they tell the story of each of them individually growing up and their family and their kids. And then it's like mm-hmm. them together in the relationship. And I feel like, Oh, I really feel like I know them now more than before. Cause most of the time at a wedding you have, People that are representing the groom, people that are representing the bride, and we're all here to celebrate their- Oh my God, how was the best man speech? Because I've been through some really painful ones. So it wasn't it it wasn't bad, but it wasn't really, it wasn't one of the better ones either. Yeah. Like it's a best, I mean, I've done four, right? So there, I, and I've had ones that were, I thought that I did that were really weak. And then I've done ones where I thought were really powerful and really good and really heartfelt. Um, I thought that they were heartfelt, like a lot of people cried, like not not, not a lot of people listening. They cried while they were giving it. Yeah, uh, everybody had That's usually to, the move. Everybody yeah. was reading uh, off of a piece of paper, so it wasn't. But what his best man did do that was really cool. His best man uh, could play the guitar and sing really well, oh, yeah. and so he played and and sung the um, God. What song is that? I know this song. Uh, I think I think it's a Jimmy Buffett song. For, I don't want to be a player no more. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I think that's big End pun. End of the road. I think that's big, big pun. Big yeah. yeah. uh, yeah. He played that for their first dance, so I thought that was pretty cool. That was what was uh, neat. I think the this the venue was the, my favorite part. I mean, this place was just absolutely beautiful. Oh, the be- best speech I ever saw at a wedding was my sister's father-in-law. So everybody was giving speeches, uh, and they all start out by saying, I want to thank this person, I want to thank that person, I want to thank this person. And so he gets up, and so he continues the speech, or he starts his speech in the same fashion, and he goes, I'd like to thank this person, thank that person. He goes, but I'd especially like to thank the following. And he goes, American Express, Visa, MasterCard, <laughs> all, the, all the people he's thanking for paying for the wedding. Uh, that's it, was, great. it was pretty funny. Oh, yeah, that is it was, funny. Yeah, it was good times. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some that are pretty, uh, that's what I like when they do like a roast. I love when someone yes. gets up there and kind of- my favorite. Right, yeah. if, you do, if you have somebody who does like, like a really- Inside information yes. on it, you just like put them totally on blast. We were just at a wedding. I did that to my brother. Katrina yeah. and I were just at a wedding that uh, one of her coworkers got married. And uh, the guy, one of his, the best man came up. It was his brother. 
and his brother, it was his older brother, gave his younger brother like just the <laughs> most ultimate yeah. roast. I mean, I I had I never even met this guy before, and I felt like I totally knew him after that roast because it was so great. So yeah. I like shit like that. I like when you get somebody who gets up there and can just rip into somebody they've known for their whole life. But I mean, you did, you did it tasteful too. It's not like it's hurtful or mm, <laughs> embarrassing no. if it's funny, you know. You know, something I wanted, I wanted to ask the audience is just as a favor because we, we've been putting a lot of energy and focus right now on the YouTube channel and then the Facebook page. So if you haven't been over to the Mind Pump Facebook page, and I'm not talking about the private forum, just the, the free page that everybody has access to, uh, we're really trying to put a lot of focus there. And so something that would help us out a ton if you get time to drop in there, like the page, and if you can, leave a review if we've provided any content that uh, has helped you out at one point in your fitness and health journey we totally appreciate that so if you guys haven't checked out the facebook page mind pump check that out we appreciate all them five-star reviews you guys we love you bird is bring, the word bring on the bird this quaz brought to you by organifi for those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Big man James, most appropriate exercises to prescribe to a complete novice or older age group in a gym fitness program to give effective weight loss but also strength and mobility whilst retaining adherence to a healthy lifestyle. Oh my goodness, this is What's the perfect exercises yeah. for all these people? Well, here's the thing is we we are all going to say the same right no doubt the squat is one of the best movements but the problem when you say something like you said advanced age right like mm. advanced age or the total novice is that more more than likely uh the first time somebody gets down in a squat it's pretty fucking ugly mm -hmm. and so just telling somebody like movements like the squat the deadlift overhead press let's just pick that these let's just say we, let's just say we agree that these are three of the best movements you could teach someone to do uh the likelihood of them performing them correctly with just you teaching them one time is not very high. So yeah, I think the it's the goal of getting them to be able to uh, work towards these primal patterns, right? Right. So if you think of it, because like as reading this question, it's like you know it, it's really tough to uh, make a general statement of like, well, just squat, just push up, just overhead press, or you know whatever it is. Um, it's so you know individualized and case by case and. Um, I, the assessment process is is really really important uh, as a trainer to um, dive deeper into where you can sort of fit in the best protocol, the best exercises that will benefit them right now and build them up towards these goals that we want. Well, them to I have. think every trainer should aspire to get to get their clients to be able to squat, deadlift, overhead press, and bench press. I think that should that should be a, and a, with a barbell. I think that should be the ultimate goal is to get their client to be able to perform each of those movements mechanically right. Mm -hmm. Now, more than likely, they're going to be able to, they're not going to be able to do most if not all of those movements when you start. And this is what will really stretch you as a trainer is to learn what why why because mm -hmm. and this is where every case is going to be different like why can't Susie do the overhead press and why can't mike squat yeah, and why she compensates so much right you know in this yeah. and then diving into what is limiting them instead of doing what i'll be the first to admit i was like as a trainer in early years which is oh we just won't do that we'll do something they can do like oh you can't mm -hmm. squat because it bothers your back let's go leg press and leg extension and in my head the logic was I'm helping them because they're still working muscles out, they're still burning calories, they're still exercising, and that's what they're paying me here for. But in re reality, the the better, the older, the more advanced trainer in me would say, okay, I, she can't squat because her back hurts. Let's figure out why her back hurts, and let's get to the bottom of it, and then let's start to teach her these movements that are going to eliminate her back from hurting while she does she's performing the squats because more than likely it's not a a structural issue as much as it's a mechanical issue and why is why is her mechanics failing when she does to do she goes to do a squat and then learning how to fix that so so here's some 
here's a typical uh, breakdown or how I start in, individuals very dramatically. Okay, so I'm giving you a super general like how I'd start people in this category. You know, advanced age or novice or you know, uh, dysfunction in terms of their you know their their movement and their body. So if I take an older person, I'm training them. Typically, the way I start them off, one of the first exercises I have them do is I have them practice slowly sitting back and sitting down on a bench. So they do a full sit and then stand up and that's their that's their squat. And so that's what we practice. That's one of the first exercises that I do with most people. Most people can do that to some extent. Now, if they're really deconditioned, if I'm training like an 80-year-old and even that is too difficult – then I'll give them a stick to hold uh, with both hands. So they have two sticks and they can assist themselves coming up and down. And as they get stronger, we move the sticks. And it's just really controlling the descent and standing back up. And that's how we practice getting to a squat. Then the second progression from that isn't a squat. It's actually a lunge. But the way I do it is I have a bar uh, set up or something stable set up to where they'll hold it with one hand. Then they'll get into a split stance like they're going to do a lunge. And I'll have them go down and come back up, and we'll play with varying degrees of, of depth. So some many times we start off with a quarter depth, and then we work on going all the way down. And believe it or not, I do that before I progress them to just a standing squat. A standing squat, it, it actually takes a while to get people to, there uh, when you're working with someone who's deconditioned or someone who's you know who's older. As far as the overhead press is concerned, nine out of ten times, if I train somebody in advanced age, they will not be able to do a good, complete overhead extension with their arms without weight, let alone with weight. I mean, they can reach up above their head, but they can't fully extend with their arms. They're not able to retract the scapula. The arms aren't able to get <clears throat> besides their ears, so they're kind of doing this real strong strong arch on their back and their, their elbows are bent. So before I even practice that, what I'll do is I'll have them work on rows, band rows or cable rows to strengthen – their ability to bring their shoulders back and down. Then the next step before I do an overhead press is I'll actually have them hold on to a lat pull down bar so that it's providing resistance up so that they're having to pull it down. Don't have them pull it down. All I'm doing is I'm having the resi- the bar. Sometimes I don't even use a, a lat pull down bar. Sometimes I'll use a stick and just pull up with my arms. But what it's doing is it's pulling their arms up into the overhead position and then I'll have them pull down a little bit without bending their elbows. So now they're resisting on the way down. Then I'll have them push up against that bar as if they're helping it. And then I'll slowly take the bar out of their hand and see if they can hold their arms in that straight, strong overhead position. Because a lot of it, before we can work on good fundamental strength, I have to get them connected to that position. And to get them connected to that position, one of the best ways to do it is to put them in that position if possible – so I get their arms fully extended, and then I have them connect to it, and then I release my help and see if they can hold themselves there. Many times, their hands will start to drop as they start to release their hands, and we'll start practicing there. But over time, they're able to hold their arms above their head and then slowly progress yeah. them to so this there's, overhead. There's like mainly like the, the, the overall function of, of each joint. I mean, you got to like test the quality and the range of motion and what you have to work with, right? So like a lot of times hip hinging is where we need to start, right? You mm-hmm. don't, most people don't even understand uh, the difference between hip hinging and squatting because they just kind of fall into that position versus uh, actively, you know, connect to that and, and push their way through it like a stretch. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of what Sal's talking about. You know, we, we sort of prep the person and we prime them into connecting to those types of movements and, uh, you know, what the joint, uh, should be able to, uh, function and and what it should be able to produce, uh, movement wise. And so, you know, placing them into the proper positions is very crucial. And then what I even do with that is very similar is just to get them to squeeze and and isometrically, uh, contract. And what, what does, what does that feel like? And what, what should you be feeling? Mm. So, Slow it down. Uh, so Dr. Brink actually shared an, a very fascinating article on the forum. I don't know if you guys saw it on the squat. Mm-hmm. And he made an interesting post. And it makes the case that, because a lot of times when we get clients or patients or whatever, if you're a doctor you know, or, or, or a movement specialist, you'll have patients. But people will come in and one of the first things we do is we try to work on their, their gait, 
That's like the most fundamental thing. Oh, right? I saw this post. Oh, we're talking about what we should be looking at is like all the way regressing all the way back down to being able to. Well, we think of a squat as being a progression from being able to walk. Right, right. But the reality is, it's actually the squat is the is far more fundamental because if you look at when we learn these things mm -hmm. as babies, babies learn how to squat or sit in a squat before they before learn how they to walk. walk. Yeah, it's just tricky. like learning how to crawl. Right. Mm -hmm. In fact. If we take uh, a, an older dis you know, person with some dysfunction and even told them to crawl on the floor, mm -hmm. they'd probably have more trouble crawling than they would walking. And it's not because it's more difficult. It's because we've literally forgot how to do this shit because we stopped doing it. Yep. It's something that we just stopped doing and we forgot how to do it. So the good news is you can relearn how to do this. The key with any novice, I don't care what age or what level of function, is to meet them where they are at mm -hmm. yeah. and to train them just a little bit over that. That's it. doesn't matter where they're at. You'd meet them just a little. And, and you it, don't want to overwhelm them either. Yeah. And it can look like basic, super basic. I've had clients in the gym where I would blow up a balloon and I'm just popping the balloon to them and all they're doing is they're reaching and hitting the balloon because that's where they're at. Like That's more than they're used to doing and that's going to get well, their body this is, to adapt. This is exactly why we created Maps Prime and Maps Prime Pro mm -hmm. was – for a question just like this, right? We know that there's a lot of trainers out there that think think about this exact question and have these types of clients all the time. And in the, in reality, a lot of people can't perform all those major lifts. But instead of just being okay with that and moving on to a different exercise that they can do, the idea is to give you the tools that to help you figure out why they can't do that movement. Why can't she do this? And that's why in, within the prime you know, and Prime Pro, there's these tests to check the range of motion for each joint. And if they fail, then there's movements to help that. And so that's the way you look at this is, okay, my goal is squat, deadlift, overhead overhead press, and bench press. These are my big movers, right? These are my big main movers. And that is a solid, solid uh, foundation for anybody. Now, the real reality is that a lot of those movements they won't be able to do, or they'll have they'll have limited range of motion, whatever. So, don't neglect the movement. You know, challenge yourself to figure out what it is that's limiting them. It's only going to make you a better trainer. We're doing the best that we can to provide all the tools via YouTube or programs to help answer all these questions. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Next question is from Anthony Santana. PT. Mark Sisson believes that everyone should always get away with eating the least amount of calories. What is your take on this? Will your body create a new maintenance with lower calories? And then once that maintenance is set, can you build muscle with that lower caloric intake, even though the science says your calories are going to be too low? Okay, I know why he says this. Yeah, I get mm. what he's saying too. This is, so, this is actually an interesting, interesting. debate, and yeah. I feel like I can argue it either way. Well, it, I mean... For longevity, I mean, technically, he's right. Uh, for longevity, well, you, you, for longevity, based to, off of the studies, if you were to look at somebody who yeah, eats at certain low of calories versus zones. versus somebody who eats an excessive amount of calories, all, all the science points to this. All, all the science points to accelerated signs of aging with the more food that you consume, in particular, the more protein and more carbohydrates that you consume. Um, or the quality of food that you consume. They measure, they've, this is both uh, measurements through subjective measurements, how people feel, how they move, uh, joint pain, function, you know, health, that kind of stuff. And then there's, you know, which are also objective. And then also the, uh, the shortening of the telomeres, which, uh, which uh, now are very strongly connected to how old your DNA is um, in terms of, you know, the shorter they are, the older your DNA is and the more likely it is to mutate. And they do this shows shows up in animal studies and in human studies where the less you consume and the less you can consume, the better for longevity. But I, you know, here's the thing with that: there's the whole live longer thing, and then there's the whole live better thing, mm. and there's a balance between the two. Like 
will I live longer if I don't, you know, eat, you know, uh, the cake at my kid's birthday party? You know, technically, probably. I don't think there's any real benefit to it. But I mean, what kind of, I mean, do I want to do that? I mean, I'm celebrating my kid's birthday. He's only going to turn five, you know, once in his life and it's a cake and we're enjoying this wonderful time together. I mean, there's kind of a balance there. And there's also this, like, let's not, let's also consider the studies that show that quality of life, enjoyment of life and the connections we have with people is also strongly connected to longevity. And if you eat low calories because you like to eat that way and you're health conscious, but you enjoy your life, that's fine. If you're a fanatic and you're, you know, orthorexic with your diet and you're eating low calories because this is the way I have to eat and I want to live a long time and you're super anal about everything and you fucking hate your life and you're not connecting with people, is that going to, what about the the negative effects of the connections and the fact that you hate your life? I don't, you know, you're probably not going to live as long now because you've got those two things. I want to say that I think we agree for the most part on this, right? I think for the most part we agree on this, but I think that's kind of obvious, right? Because- most the what you would compare to is the opposite or the other extreme, which is overconsumption of all this shit. And like, no, yeah, no shit. Mm. That is not ideal for you. This is why I would challenge that thought, though. So even though I agree with it, how I would challenge it is this: there, there has to be, and I, and there is no, I guarantee, there's no studies that show this because this would be really tough for us to figure out. But what about all the the micronutrients and what is the optimal amount of all these different micronutrients that my individual body should be taking? And if I go with the theory of, you know, you, we should all be striving to eat as little as possible. Sure, my body may adapt to that to get by and be efficient with that. But is that the most optimal amount of nutrients for all my body's systems for all of its different needs? And am I lacking there? Yeah. So that that's where Food I would quality is mo- very important with that. Well, yeah, yeah right, exactly. So if you're if you are on the lower end of calories and nutrients, and I mean this person's asking more for the for the muscle building aspect, so that's a no brainer. Yeah, of course, if you're eating so low low calorie, and then you also have these conflicting goals goals that you also want to be the biggest buffest guy that you know that's pretty tough to do that right so they they kind of conflict with each other if we're just talking about health and longevity well then yeah i could argue that eating that way in comparison to how a majority of people consume food absolutely but i would be willing to challenge that way of thinking that you know we don't know we don't know the three men that are on this podcast right now you know, exactly how much vitamin D Justin needs in comparison to me, exactly, you know, how much creatine that, you know, Sal is getting in comparison. Like we all have got all these different uh, amounts that we're intaking or not intaking based of our regular diet and based off of how we're training and working or our our own genetics. Like, you know, because I have psoriasis, so my body probably has different needs, you know, on a micronutrient level than someone like Sal or Justin. So therefore, you know, if I'm eating on that super low calorie, would it necessarily be It'd ideal? Be really, for me? it just seems really hard to manage. You know, like like manage that mentality of like when I have a really rigorous day or I have something that you know comes up where I feel like really low energy or um, you know I'm trying to recover and, and then I'm still trying to eat as low of calories as possible. Am I really going to nourish myself properly? You know, with that mentality all the time, like it. I, I think that you know it's a it's it's different because I feel like this this is in direct contrast with the way that we think and society thinks about like you know having to constantly eat and keep your metabolism high and mm-hmm. you know like I get where he's going with this mentality of like longevity but I feel like that that becomes quickly becomes something that can become like a fixation mm-hmm. like it, it can be just like you know the macro like counting where I'm like so stuck on like always trying to like keep everything like so low. I mean, there's no doubt that everybody eats too much. I mean, there really is yeah. no doubt of it. Right. That's why it's a good, I agree yeah. with that. No, yeah. I, n- nobody need, I, mean, I mean, you know, three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, who made that shit up? Like yeah. we, we probably don't need that. Uh, most people have not gone a day without food, which everybody right now is probably thinking, oh, well, that's a good thing. Well, not really. I mean, we evolved going without food for periods of time. It's part of our... DNA, it's actually healthy for us. In fact, a lot of the health benefits that people get from low calorie, you can get from fasting or prolonged fasting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, we are glu- we are gluttons. Like we throw away more food in these de- in developed nations than some of these third world countries have for to, to feed themselves with. The amount of food that we throw away is insane. The amount of food that we consume is insane, and it's changed 
pretty uh, recently. Like, if you go online, you can look at pictures of what uh, the typical soda look like or the typical French fries or burger or what the typical steak look like when you went to a restaurant. And they're a lot smaller than they are now. Like, I go to, you go to Cheesecake Factory and the the fucking size of the meal that they give you is insane. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like that 40 years ago. 40 years ago, you didn't find that that size of a meal anywhere. You no. get a meal. Right. Actually, if it, you go to Europe, crazy. in fact, you go to Europe and you order meals in Europe and you see in many of these other countries that they're very small. Like you have a breakfast in some countries and it's like well, you one about, egg. You, and this. you don't really need that much, I mean, to keep, keep we, your body up. We do eat way, way, way. Uh, too much yeah. food, so I, you know I see where he's. Well, I just think with too this. like things are like it just seems so many things are more optimal when it's cyclical, you know, and it's 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 you're undulating sort of your your process, right? As opposed to like okay, this is my formula, and I'm like trying so hard to maintain this consistency long term forever, right? That just doesn't seem like. Mm-hmm. Uh, the most beneficial way for my body to react all the time. Like it's going to get super efficient at that. Well, he said, he points out right here that, you know, and then once maintenance is set, you can build muscle with a lower cal- caloric intake, even though the science says calories is going to be too low. There is some good truth to this. Yeah, and, that's true. Uh, I remember experiencing this the first time that I got lean for a show. I remember pushing my body to a body fat percentage uh, that I'd never been to before. What what required me to do that was a, a low calorie level for a longer period than I've ever done before in my life. And th- I actually found that post-show, when I went back to trying to build again, I actually built and, and broke through a muscle-building plateau of mine that I'd been in for quite some time. And that was because I got this. I had created this new caloric maintenance by cutting, you know. And once I got rid of that fear of, oh my God, staying low calorie for this long, I'm going to lose all this muscle off my body. Once I got past that fear that that wasn't true, and I realized I just shredded all this body fat. My body got adapted to you know consuming 2,300, 2,500 calories. Mm-hmm. So then when I went back to eating 3,000, 3,500 and lifting and continuing to train, my body started to pack on muscle pretty the, well. The wow. be- yeah. The, the some of the best muscle gains you'll ever get will come from something like that. Um, that's why we recommend mini cuts and mini bulks. You do s- desensitize your body, and there's some science to suggest that that happens with protein, where mm-hmm. you consume high levels of protein all the time, your body just becomes uh, less efficient with it, uses more of it for energy than it normally would, and less of it for muscle building, and you get less of, an, of a muscle building effect. So, yeah, going low calorie and then bumping it up to build muscle. Uh, you'll you'll see that you'll see that benefit more than if you are always high calorie. But I think we can all agree most people eat too much food all the time. Definitely. Right. Next up is Shani Doe. What's your thoughts on stevia compared to other artificial sweeteners? Would you put it in the same category with the same side effects related to microbiome, appetite, etc.? Or is it relatively harmless? Ooh, Sal, I don't, you just posted uh, well, something I don't, about this, right? I don't think that you could put it in the same category mm. as artificial sweeteners because it's not artificial. It's real. Yeah. It's, it's derived so, from a plant. It's not an artificial sweetener, but it is a processed one. R- a replacement for sugar, right? So mm. highly a, processed, right? It's a, it can be. It can be very processed because uh, they don't just get, put the leaf in there. They have to process the shit out of it to make it taste good. So uh, there's there's evidence, more and more of it's coming out. Recently, a study just was published showing that um, glucose intolerance is observed in the gut after a short period of time of consuming artificial sweeteners. There have been other studies connecting uh, things like diabetes and glucose uh, uh, issues with artificial sweeteners. Um, so this is all, it's all pointing in the same direction. There's been studies on artificial sweeteners and their effect on the gut microbiome, uh, in particular how they kill the beneficial bacteria that we know about, uh, sucralose in particular. Sucralose, I think, in one study killed off 50% of the beneficial bacteria that we know about. I say we know about because there's so much bacteria in there, but there are ones we know that are good. Sucralose kills a shit ton of it, and the odds are your protein powder bar or whatever pre-workout is probably flavored with sucralose. So we are always anti-artificial sweeteners. There's, there's just more evidence against them. Plus, they are artificial. Now, uh, I of course, there's things that are natural that are bad for you too. So I'm not saying all things that are natural are good for you. But the odds that we create something in a laboratory that's going to have no negative side effects are much lower than something 
that people have been consuming for thousands of years that we just have thousands of years of anecdotal evidence. Mm -hmm. No, and we know kind of what it does and what it doesn't do. Like stevia has been consumed for a very, 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 very long time. It's been consumed by people much longer than artificial sweeteners. It is part of a plant. Again, animals and plants and and, and bacteria all co-evolve uh, on Earth together. So the likelihood that something that people consumed thousands of years where's ago for the, a long time. Where's the highest concentration of stevia found? What do you mean? In Earth. Like, it's in a plant. Location? It's in a leaf. Uh, oh, you mean, oh, where is it yeah. grown? Um, yeah. That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe Doug can look that up uh, hmm. while I'm talking. Um, it's in South America, Doug. I think, Doug? South, I think <laughs> Doug's just going to throw it out there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think he's right. Anywhere. I think it was South America. Yeah. So, so that's why I'll go artificial. If I'm going to bet money, I'm going to go. I'm going to go natural all day long, uh, always, because I know I'm going to win most of the time. That being said, that does not mean stevia or stevia is not uh, is is perfectly safe. Um, stevia has no calories in it, so that makes it cool. It doesn't really affect blood glucose levels like um, like sugar will. So that's cool. Uh, is it perfectly safe? Here's why I'm going to say no. Anything that, because I think we consider the perception of sweetness as being benign. In other words, when our brain perceives something to taste a certain way, we think that that has no other effects on the rest of our body. So if we can create something or have something that we perceive as sweet but has no calories, then we think then it's perfectly fine. That doesn't mean anything. That, not true. There is an effect because it still tastes sweet. That sweet perception is going to change things in your body and the way your, your body reacts. There's a reason why you perceive that taste. Now, is it bad that you perceive sweetness and it's not accompanied by you know, sugar or something that sweetness normally comes with? Maybe. That might, that might be a problem. Not quite sure. Mm. But this, this whole tricking our body with flavors without calories and thinking right. that there's not going to be any or you're not potential side effects and yeah you know, those nutrients I, I don't, attached to it I don't buy that I think anytime you you perceive something there's there's something changing including sweetness and because historically evolutionarily speaking anytime we tasted something that was sweet it came with uh sugar yeah. typically that I think hormones and chemicals in the body are going to react in a particular way or at least the receptors that Mm-hmm. you know, interact with those things. There's, it's very, very complex. Remember, the human metabolism is, besides the brain, the most complex thing. Animal metabolism is just mo- the most complex thing that we know about in the universe. And so it's not as easy as, you know, eat this, no calories, therefore it has no effect. I don't think so. Do I think stevia or stevia is a better uh, alternative than artificial sweeteners? 100%. Absolutely. Um, do I think it's better than sugar? Depends on the context. You know what I'm saying? Right, how much like, of it. Exactly. Like, if, am I, if I have, like, something with fruit in it and my, the rest of my diet's healthy, then, you know, is that going to be okay? Sure. If I'm eating too much sugar, too many calories, and the overconsumption is going to be bad, then maybe throwing in some stevia in there might be better. Then that makes sense in that context. So How, uh, how often do you guys personally um, – I mean, because complete transparency, I probably use stevia in my coffee in the morning, which is pretty regular – Mm. Um, and then I have my green Cokes occasionally, which is, uh, stevia and cane sugar. Um, and then our, I believe our green juice is actually sweetened with stevia also. Mm. Mm -hmm. So organic, so organic supplements, uh, are, uh, they're, if it's organic, it's going, and if it's sweetened without sugar, it's going to be sweetened with typically with stevia, Mm -hmm. stevia, monk fruit will be something else that's in there. Mm. Um, keep in mind supplements are, uh, they're, they're not as ideal as food. They never will be as ideal as food. It's just the bottom line. So like we are sponsored by Organifi. I personally have been, uh, really enjoying their green juice. I've noticed now that I've used it now for a while, I've noticed great gut health benefits, which I did not anticipate. It's actually, uh, something I think it's going to be a, a staple that I use now for a long time. Uh, relatively regularly because I notice it really has a positive effect on my gut health. It is flavored with stevia. That's probably most of the stevia. That's all the stevia I get. I don't use stevia otherwise to sweeten things. If I drink coffee, right. it's typically bla- black or with butter or whatever. Uh, stevia is also uh, can be processed un- non-organically. So if you do get it, 
I, I would say it's probably better uh, to be organic. Well, I, the think the reason why I'm I'm asking and I wanted to hear where you guys were at is I think that I use it quite a bit and I already am aware of um, of that. And that I, I'm always trying to be mindful of it when I make those choices that day. Like, oh, you know, today mm -hmm. I just happened to grab a bar on the go. That's not normal. So maybe I'm not going to, this is definitely not a day. I'm also going to have my green Coke and I'm also going to have the green juice. So I'm already mindful of the intake um, and I'm always trying to minimize that. I think that that's always the message that I'm always trying to share with others is that okay in reality there's going to be there's much bigger rocks always right there's be debating over stevia versus artificial sweeteners or regular sugar um and then the rest of your like health and nutrition is fucking upside down like mm -hmm. yeah i wouldn't be stressing over that that much i would be trying to minimize it as much as possible but then focusing on these other areas and I think there's a give and take on some of these things. If there's certain way, for example, the green juice, and I think Justin uh, recommended how this is how he uses the Organifi a lot. It's just a way, and I've used it the same way too, because I do like, uh, you know, I, I used to like Coke Zeros or the green Cokes. It's just, I like to sip on something besides water. I drink a ton of water already. Mm -hmm. And so I like to have something else. It's a nice change, right? And it's, if it helps me not drink something else that is way worse for me, um, this one at least has a bunch of benefits that I'm getting from the green juice. I'm going to take that because it's a lesser evil. So I think all these things have to kind of come into play when you, the, your thought process of I do or I don't. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the important message really is to pay attention, you know, to really understand, um, you know, your intake with that. And, um, you know, like you said, like I definitely am not going to eliminate all things that taste sweet in my diet. You know, that's just not a reality. Like there's, there'll be days where I do try and do that and I'm more mindful to, you know, consume, you know, less carbohydrates, less, you know, sweetening, you know, sugar, stevias, whatever it is I'm putting in my, my, my daily, you know, intake. Um, but yeah, like I like to use stuff like that, like green juice, just like you said, like I'll, I'll look forward to it that way. So the no. more you sort of minimize it in your diet, the more actually you look forward to it. Yeah. Now stevia in South America as an herb was used for to treat certain things, so like stomach problems, uh, colic, uh, um, and believe it or not, I got to read more about this, but as a contraception, uh, as a form of contraception. So some naturopaths will recommend that women who are trying to get pregnant or are pregnant might want to look into or think twice about maybe using stevia because of that. But hmm. oh, really? other, but it's also got health benefits. So like there's studies showing stevia's got anti-cancer properties, improves blood pressure, good for cholesterol. And again, it's been used for a long time in South America as a medicinal herb. So that's why I always lean towards it as my, you know, non- caloric uh, sweetener of choice quick commercial break you guys we keep getting asked all the time how can i support the mind pump family here's one of the best ways you guys can you guys love that chimera coffee that we have chimera coffee with a k you go to chimeracoffee.com put in the discount code mind pump for 10 percent at the checkout if you guys have not tried ben greenfield's new bars out they're fantastic if you want some go to ben greenfield fitness.com forward slash nature bite put in the code mind pump and get 10 percent off go check it out Next up is tea fluid. What are the best anabolic foods? Oh, easy. <laughs> Fats. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I'm going to say very, very easy. Okay, so if we're thinking about, if we're talking about foods that actually have an anabolic effect. Steroids. Anabolic meaning. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat those for yeah. breakfast. Yeah, grow, go to the steroid tree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that actually um, promote an anabolic environment with your hormones and everything in your body. Um, dietary cholesterol. Uh, dietary cholesterol, mm. if you consume, it, it, and it doesn't work long term, it's kind of a short term thing. You'll get it, you'll notice it. Steak and eggs. Yeah. And it, it by the way, old school bodybuilders yeah. and old school strongman, this is what they used to do when they wanted to get stronger. They would eat uh, liver and egg yolks and full fat, you know, butters and creams. And they didn't know why it worked, they just knew that it worked and it made them really strong. It was the cholesterol. There's many studies that show that consuming uh, high amounts of dietary cholesterol for, you know, relatively short periods of time, you know, three to six weeks or whatever, you'll get a boost in testosterone. Remember, cholesterol is the it's like the 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 base molecule for hormones. In mm. fact, cholesterol itself is a steroid. Steroid mm. refers to a class of, of molecules. 
consuming more cholesterol strengthens cell membranes. Uh, it will increase uh, testosterone levels. You'll notice an anabolic strength building effect. I always do when I do this. Mm. Again, I notice it short term. It's like three weeks, and then it kind of goes away, and then I bring it back down because I I, I may notice some negative uh, some Dude, negative. People effects. are still so scared of this because of the American Heart Association. Like they fucked it up for everybody. I feel I feel in sodium too like this. So I yeah. feel like um, good one. Whenever I and, and I highly recommend people uh, trying this right where they'll kind of go low, either come off a of fast. Um, or like lower sodium, lower calorie, lower type cholesterol, and then f- feeding it hard to, so you can really see the difference, right? Obviously, if you just if you don't track, you don't pay attention, and then all of a sudden you just oh, I'm gonna have some more eggs in my diet or have some liver every now and then. You may not see enough of a difference, and you know I know Sal has talked about this on the show before, where you know he'll literally look at his total amount of cholesterol and double the intake, and so it takes kind of that you know, difference to really feel the difference if you're looking for like that mm-hmm. anabolic feeling. Uh, and nothing has given me more of that more than that than actually restricting from certain foods and then right. feeding back in, in, into it. But then you it. felt more inflammation as a result, right? So you have to like manage that properly as far as like the time frame that you do this, right? So yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'll do it. Um, when I do when I do this, I'll usually phase it around a uh, strength building phase because that's right now. And cholesterol bumping your cholesterol also strengthens the the central nervous system, and so I think that's where a lot of the strength gains come from, and then the muscle gains follow. But having cholesterol post workout, this is something that I've been talking about for a little while, and this is very interesting. Cholesterol is used to repair muscles as well. In fact, if you do an intense workout and then they test your serum cholesterol in your blood. It'll go down because your body is up. It's sucking Do you know it what? In. That was something that we called a long time ago that I don't know if I've seen yet. Has someone done that yet? I've heard a couple people talk about it. It's it's not new information. It's old. Like, I know. Like they used to do it back in the day. Again. But you know, it's made a comeback yeah. because of the what two years ago or three years ago, guys, when we first started Mind Pump, uh, when uh, American Heart Association had to come out and recant what they had been saying for the last thirty plus years. So, yeah, because it's no longer a nutrient and concern, according to them. Right. And back then it was, right? Mm-hmm. So now that it's not, now that it's more popular, American Heart Association recognizes as it's okay. Now I bet we're going to see supplements start to totally. st- start to come out that's related to that. Now we've, here, we've speculated and talked about doing it ourselves. Yeah. And now yeah. here's the problem with that is how do you provide cholesterol in a non oxidized form? Mm. Because, like eggs, for example, egg yolks. When you cook the shit out of your eggs, you actually damage some of the cholesterol and not only make it less you gotta go raw, baby. less ideal, yeah. but in fact, it may be pro-inflammatory a little bit. If you eat the egg yolks raw, then the cholesterol is better for you. So I don't know how they would put it in a supplement without processing it and creating and just making <laughs> you know, it some bad. Really nasty drink, you know. Yeah. See what happens. Um, I'm not quite. Uh, I'm not sure, but like post workout. Remember how they used to do the the egg white pumps? Yeah. Maybe they do uh, that with the yolks. Dude, it's funny. <laughs> it's so it's gross. like we should call that. We should call the company that makes the egg whites and be like, Hey, what, oh, are, you yeah. do, what are you doing with Give all? Give us the yolks? your leftovers. Yeah, yeah, we'll take all the yolks <laughs> over. But yeah, post workout, man, you'll get faster recovery. Um, and more strength from doing that. The other one is saturated fat, bumping up your sat. I know I'm saying all the shit that everybody's like, oh my god. <laughs> I know. We say, what do I say? Yeah. Sodi- Blasphemy. Sodium yeah. saturated fats and fats. That's yeah. it. Blasphemy. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. It Bump up your saturated fat intake uh, if you're healthy otherwise, and it's you know natural fa- sources of saturated fat or good sources, and you'll notice that your strength uh, will typically go up as well. But I'll tell you something right now. Nothing's more anabolic with food than going from a you know, uh, a, 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 a deficit to a surplus. And That's- when you, when you, and when you do something like, uh, like the sodium thing I'm talking about, so I always recommend someone tracks it first, kind of pay attention to where you're at and keep it minimal. And then like, if I'm going to boost it, I'm going to boost it with like a salt, like a Himalayan pink salt. Oh dude, I'm glad you brought that, that up on, on thrive. Uh, yeah. Yeah, oh I, yeah. Yeah. So thrive's got a great price on Himalayan pink salt because it's normally expensive as shit mm. at the store. Check this out. I'm glad you brought that up, Adam. I mm-hmm. just read an article. They just did a study oh, sea salt. Yeah. on a Ugh. bunch of popular brands of sea salts. Mm-hmm. And and I believe in either all of them or almost all of them, like a majority of them, they found microscopic plastic. What? Yes. Yeah. In almost every single one. That's you, the state of our ocean. That's our we have fuck, so much fucking plastic. That's because of our oceans. Yeah. Because they're getting it from the ocean and our oceans are There's filthy. Like islands of plastic. So they're filthy as fuck, right? Yeah. So that you take sea salt and you're a health person. You're like, oh, I'm going to eat this healthy sea salt. 
and you end up ingesting plastic, which is very bad for you. Wow. And they're finding so, so I'm telling people, I'm telling my family, everybody, like, either you consume the best source is Himalayan mm-hmm. because it's mined from ancient beds of salt that existed before we polluted the shit out of our oceans. So it's clean. Or got to go with the freaking, you know, process the shit. The salt. old Martin. Because, fucking... because it's better than plastic. Oh, man. How fucked up is that? Wow. Crazy. Yeah, isn't that fucked up? That is fucked up. I did not yeah. know that. But uh, but yeah, Thrive's got a good price on it. You Dude, can get... I can't believe mm-hmm. some of the stuff on Thrive. Like something like that, the salt would, would literally be like 15 bucks. That salt, that- uh, Seven. Himalaya. Yeah, no, that's what it would be. Yeah, yeah no, it's seven yeah. bucks. Yeah, yeah no, on, would be on Thrive, it's like half the price. It's Everything, crazy. Everything's on there like that. I Every, know. Everything I'm buying, everything it, on man. there because it's all like 30, 40, or half, 50%. Mm-hmm. And I know Whole Foods now has lowered their prices because they're working with Amazon. So it's cool to see this little, little price, price war. Wars, but but yeah. Thrive still lower, dude. Yeah. Thrive, yeah. Thrive still has the lowest yeah, prices. Yeah, no, no. They, st- they still beat them for sure. They so beat what, them. any of those, whether you're doing sodium, the cholesterol, I, I even get that anabolic feeling from depleting carbohydrates for three or four days and then, pumping, and them then pump, pumping them back up. But to me, I think if you really want to feel the difference um, and potentially see the difference in your workout, like, you know, spend a little time tracking, you know, just see where you're at currently um, and whatever, whatever you, and I would do one, one by itself. So you can kind of feel the difference of each of them, because I think everybody, depending on what you are either oversaturated with or very low on, will feel different because I, I've done this with sodium with someone and it was like, Oh my God, game changer for them. And then I've done it with other people and then they felt like really nothing from it. I've done it with, uh, I've done the fats thing with people and they feel little to no big deal over it. And then I've had other people, it's been like, Oh my God, game changer for. So mm. what I think it has the most to do, of course, our genetic, uh, makeup makes the biggest difference, but even like what you regularly do already with the body's already become very adapted to, if you already eat pretty high cholesterol and then telling you to add more cholesterol may not make a huge difference for you. Uh, so same thing goes with the sodium. So, so pay attention to kind of where you're at and then play with one of those, maybe double them as long as you're in a healthy, safe range, which it, it takes quite a bit mm. of that stuff. You to know, get. I want to say the first time I heard about uh, really consuming a lot of cholesterol for strength was when I was reading, because I love to read old school oh, bodybuilders yeah, and stuff. Oh, the old timey. Yeah. And uh, one guy, Vince Garanda, who was known at the time as being like the smartest bodybuilder. Like everybody, he had gyms and he gave people diets and he was known as like the the scientists of bodybuilders. And he was shredded, especially back when he competed. He had like full six pack, back when bodybuilders kind of looked a little bigger and smoother. Yeah. And he had a diet that he would recommend for strength and they call it the steak and eggs diet. And it was like steak and eggs cooked in butter and full fat cream. And he used to promote the hell out of this, the bodybuilders. And Arnold even did some of these diets to gain mass in his early years. And he talks about it mm-hmm. in his encyclopedia of bodybuilding. So for all you... You know, muscle building nerds, uh, look up the Vince Garanda diet. It's uh, it's right along those lines. Right on. Also, go to YouTube, subscribe to our channel. It's the coolest channel on YouTube. It was actually ranked number one the in the world. Coolest in the world by us. We got a trophy. Mind Pump TV. Also, uh, thirty days of coaching. It's available. It's for anybody. It's free. Just go to mindpumpmedia.com and subscribe. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.